What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you're listening to Liquid Carnage Episode 3 of 2019. Wow. Is that right? Is, uh, it, is it Episode 3? Well, it, okay, so it, here's how it's working. So it's officially the second episode recorded in 2019, but the third episode released in 2019. So whatever, tomatoes, tomatoes, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, 3019. I mean, yeah. Oh, that, that's the third voice we have on the show tonight. Before we have a chance to introduce him, uh, our friend of the show, owner, uh, part owner of the Beale Street Barbers in downtown Kingman, Arizona, our boy Josh. Josh, welcome to the show. Yo, what up? Welcome to the show, buddy. What's up? Let's I completely begin. forgot that I think out loud, and it's like, wait, I was thinking, like, wait, what were you guys saying? So I was like speaking out loud. My bad. I completely ruined your uh, entrance there, buddy. My bad. Well, that's that's fine. I mean, it, it's more candid this way. It is. I actually did it on purpose. Oh, did you? Oh, that's, that's, it's very well thought out. <laughs> well, you know, you know. Now, for those you know. for those of you who remember a podcast from uh, last year, uh, Josh has been on the show before, and we talked a little bit about uh, the business that he is in and the special stories that he gets to hear on a daily basis. Um, and uh, and so he should not be a uh, he should not be a surprise to anybody. But he's got quite a good take by working with all these strange customers that he has, including our boy Scott. Um, that no, nope. uh, you know that causes him to have all kinds of great stories to bring. Definitely to the table, strange. So. Yeah, nobody nobody touches my hair now except for Josh. I'm very adamant about that. He does a great job. Sounds so, so intimate, it, right? <laughs> well, we talked about it last time. How you don't you, you said that most you know hairstylists and barbers don't care if someone else cuts your hair, but I, Jason and I both touched on the fact that it's weird for a guy to go to another barber when he he goes to someone on the regular. You know, I think that's the problem. The problem is that most people, most dudes nowadays, they don't care. It's just like yeah. whatever. But and, and really, you should care who's touching your hair. I mean, and come I, on. And, and I'll be honest, a few months back when you're in between shops and you're opening up your new, your new space, I, I texted you one day and you were down in Phoenix getting your license switched over. And I, like, I had to get my hair cut. So I had to go back to one of the uh, other local uh, quick clip places, we'll just call it, one of the places where uh, wait, you can walk in and get your hair cut and get out. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, this, is, this is how you're telling me over the air I, right I, now? I, I told this is you, how I'm finding wow, out. Dude. Don't even. <laughs> that, that, don't even. <laughs> on, man. No, I'm kidding. You God, why don't you just put it on Facebook me, and make right? it like, officially? Jo- Josh, and I have like, to, Josh and I have to change awful, our, our relationship status to it's complicated now. It's, well, if you check right now, mine's already changed. Oh, shit. See, that's, I'm, I'm already behind the ball. So <laughs> l- let, me, let me ask our viewers, uh, do you go to a hair salon or do you go to a barber to get your hair cut? Or, or colored, or whatever you do. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, do you want to see Tom, our executive producer, maybe get a mohawk this summer? Hit yeah. him up on Twitter, Instagram, at Liquid underscore EP. Hell yeah. Reverse Sorry. mohawk. Yeah, right? Oh, that'd be cool. Like, is reverse mullet a thing? Can that be a thing? Uh, sure, we can make it a thing. Oh, dude. That'd be so party I- in the front, business in the back? Yes. I, I got yes. I got to tell you Josh, I was uh Noreen and I were down in uh we were in Tus and uh, Tempe walking around some outdoor like f- fair they were having going on. Down and on I walked I walked by a uh a barber shop that instantly made me think of you. There was a line of people Aww. waiting for probably seven or eight people that were waiting, but it was one of those ones where they open up a garage door and it's all open to the outside. And the two guys were just cutting it and doing it and they had music going and people were just sitting there kind of waiting, reading a book or reading their phones. And I thought, yeah, I know a guy like that. He's in Kingman, Arizona. Oh, dude. <laughs> and you know what? I, I'm so glad that, that someone like Josh has, has a barber shop in downtown Kingman because it really is a throwback to when I was a kid. And now that I'm an adult, I can appreciate going into a barber shop and just hanging out and, and, and just shooting the shit. And you never know what you're going to talk about. And that's the best part. Cause you we're could, making, you it's get, almost like we're making dudes fall in love with being a dude again. That, you know, that's a great way of, of putting it. You know, it, it's, it's finding your manhood again. Well, isn't it like anything else? Everything goes in cycles. I think so. You know what I mean? Like everything uh, goes yeah. in a cycle where yeah. it's, it's cool. Then it becomes kind of ooh, not very cool. And now it's retro. It's like, Oh, it's a reminder of the good old days when things were easy and, you know, uh, uh, you, you could someone, uh, you know, don't lie or, you know, never cry wolf. And it turns into something that like, oh, OK, that's a, that's something that's going to remind me of better times when yeah. people didn't lie and all that stuff. So well, not just I'm that, with you, man. But I'm it, with you. You're too, you're being too nostalgic. Just being a dude, man. 
you know, you don't got to make it complicated. That's true. It, it's true. If you dude, walk, if there's you a lot in, about being a dude nowadays. Come on now. But if you walk into yeah, the barbershop. Yeah, it shouldn't be complicated. Yeah, if you walk into the barbershop, you can, you can walk right in the middle of whatever conversation is going on. And it's not yes. that big of a deal. Yes. I mean, and, and your opinion is not only asked for, it's required. It doesn't as matter opposed what the to, topic is. As opposed to you walking anywhere else, and they look, you just like blurt out something in the middle of a the conversation. They look at you, and they're like, what? Excuse yeah. me, um, this is a private conversation? No. Nah. No. Josh, <laughs> Josh does do a very good job of keeping everybody involved in the conversation. So it doesn't matter if it's Santana, his partner across the room, or the two guys sitting on the couch waiting for their, their, their turn to get the haircut. You, you are going to be actively engaged in this conversation. Yes. No matter what the conversation is. Right. Right. You know, and, and sometimes these conversations go on for weeks. Uh, your, whole, <laughs> yeah. your conversation on eating ass a few months ago <laughs> transcended uh, multiple conversations I had throughout the weeks because as you cut other people's hair and ask their opinion on that, uh, they, everyone had a random story to tell with their barber asking this question. We realized we all had the same barber. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh, <God. laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, and, and it was and it was brilliant. It was like, oh, he's bringing people together. It's you know, it's just. Did you talk about this? Yeah. Well, what's your opinion now? Now we're talking about it in open environments across the town. To be honest, uh, you're still on that subject, right, so I, well, think, I think you need to move on. I don't think you've ever finished that subject. So, oh, it was it was sealed. It was closed. It was, oh, uh, it was put it was, in the vault. Well, I was using that as an example for this. Now it just sound weird. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it because that's exactly what I do to you in the shop. <laughs> wow. That's the whole point. Talk about, I, talk, I cut hair for free. Be all right now, yeah. man. Talk about well, Jason. Holy crap. Jason, so down in Phoenix, do you go to a barber shop or do you go to a hair salon? I went to, um, uh, uh, I don't even call it a hair salon. I went to a um, place that cuts hair. Uh, when I first got down here, I need. No, I needed a haircut, so I went to Sports Clips. I just went oh, in there because they gave me, like, a discount, the old, like, five bucks oh, for a free haircut or something. Mm -hmm. But um, the my hair was, like, the manager, and she cut my hair perfectly that I just said, I'm just going to keep going to you every time I go to her. And if she's well, not there, then I don't – I wait a day and get my haircut when she's there. Next time you're in town, I'd, I'd like to buy you a haircut at the Beale Street Barbershop done by Josh. If you Sounds give me a heads good, up, I'll set the appointment and see if Josh can set it up. I, I think that would be great for you to come down and hang on the barbershop for a little while. Old and I will throw in right. a hot towel shave for free. Wow. That, oh, I could always use it. Because you know what, that, John, that is yeah. the difference between the barbershop and that other crappy place that you just said. Wow. No, no. I'm, not I mean, saying I'm, that not she did, I'm pretty sure she did but, a good job or whatnot, but that is the distinction before, be, between all the other places and a barbershop. That's true. The other Bam. thing that it, the other thing that's hard for me is in Scottsdale. I don't know what they've done. It's kind of like the airport. Everything is an elevated price for the same friggin' thing. Yeah, absolutely. So Noreen goes about... and gets her Noreen goes and gets her haircut and does all the things in, in Kingman that she paid like sixty seventy dollars for two hundred and forty dollars, dude. Two hundred. <laughs> I I believe it. Yeah, I, I, believe I, it. I would be surprised if you went to Tempe. I would mean, it be the same price, or would it be a little bit cheaper? Maybe going to Mesa? I don't know. The, the, these guys were out the door, so I'm assuming that they were reasonably priced. But they were busy, so they might have to charge more just to you know supply and demand kind of deal. You know. And well, you the pay... price is actually going up because the other day uh, it's been a while, but I went back to my old shop where I was working at in Phoenix, and uh, it was a good friend of mine. And I was like, I, I pay him, I pay him all the time. It doesn't matter. He says, no, don't worry about it. But I pay him anyways. I'm like, what's the haircut? He's like, oh, it's uh, and he was hesitant. He said, it's uh, it's twenty eight dollars. Like what for a basic haircut in the hood? Twenty eight dollars. I'm like, dang man, shit, holy fuck. The hood. No, I'm telling right? you, it is it is expensive. I I don't know what it is um, about Phoenix. Like, oh, okay, you're in the big city, so mm, okay, I'm gonna charge you more. It's big. Um, massages prices. are more expensive. Haircuts are more expensive. Um, you're paying for the luxury of having everything close by. I guess. Mm. I guess. Well, I think uh, you're just paying for high rents. That's same price. You're paying for. <laughs> Literally, Vegas is the same way. Everything well, is it, expensive. It's like the this same guy, thing. Yeah, this guy in Tempe was right off of Mill Avenue, so I have to imagine that his rent is probably pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're up by the price. college, right there, yeah, that's yeah. probably a pretty good price. Yeah, that would be um, a good price. Now. That being said, it was such a cool vibe. Like we, I would just, we were just walking by, and he had the music blaring. I mean, it, it was blaring through the garage. Like it was like a, like a little storefront with a garage door that kind of opened up, and it kind of opened up the whole 
little sidewalk area to his shop and he had the music blaring and people were just like jamming and and i think he was playing 80s music at the time because i think i could have sworn living on a prayer was on the radio but it was just wow yeah it was it was just uh it was just a fun vibe man i was thinking oh yeah it reminded me to you so bad no <laughs> and, that, and that'd be cool to have a have a roll of garage door in a place like tempe you can have that True. It's, it's it's nice like nine months out of the year, and then when it's not nice, it's blaring hot. So you just close and turn on the AC. Now let me ask you this: Is the only thing that's different between having it in Tempe and having it in Kingman that uh, the 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 people who could do that just don't have the money to do it? I don't think anybody's really thought about it. Or maybe Kingman, the- I think, could gussy up and do some of that kind of stuff. I mean, hell, we have a barber shop now, that, so I mean, we've already got a lot of the stuff that's coming up. I mean, I just I, I wonder sometimes why. Kingman doesn't have some of the things that I've come now accustomed to down here in Phoenix. Well, I'll just say this. There is no regulation as far as that goes. I mean, there's obviously you have to have like building permits or whatever. As far as like the Arizona State Board goes is for barbers, there's not a regulation on that. But with that said, you know, it's a lot more windy here in Kingman than it is in Phoenix. That's true. You ha- you have to have an east or west facing building to really make that work for you because if it's a north or a south facing building. Uh, you're either going to catch that northern wind or that southern wind. Yeah, because it really sucks. Even with, like, the ceiling fans that we have in here, hair, hair literally gets everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, boy. Okay. That's true. That's true. All right. It's a nice accoutrement, but it's probably not the most. It sounds savvy. like a dope idea, though. It sounds oh, super absolutely. dope. So when was, uh, when was your last haircut, Scotty? Uh, Friday, this past week. This oh, past wow. Week. Okay. So what, what, what's new going on in the barber shop? Well, first off, man, th- this is their own shop now. I mean, these guys are on their own. And you walk in, it is like it's just a cool, it's a cool vibe. They've done some great art on the wall. Uh, it's it's cool conversation, and and they're always adding more things to it every three weeks when I go in. So it's just, it's it's hard to describe the vibe, but it's just cool. It's laid back. It's it's where you want to hang out. Awesome. If you want that garage feel, like with the door. I mean, we don't have the garage door, but we do have like bare cement. Yeah, <laughs> we still don't have the floor done. <laughs> yeah, we still don't have the floor done, man. It's a process. Hand and, 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 trust and, the process. And, and, and that's probably half the charm is that he's still working on it. So it's a work in progress, but this is it is from cutting your hair. Hey, exactly. I just think I, I think it, like I said, I think it was just cool that it. it as I saw that place, I instantly thought of you and your shop. Thanks, man. I, I feel yeah. all tingly inside now. Yeah, yeah butterflies. Tingle, man. <laughs> Tingle. Uh, you know, but you know, one of the conversations we got into on on Friday, it, it was interesting. It's and I'm not even sure how we got into this conversation. And I thought, man, this would be a great topic for the show because it's always fun having Josh on here because his point of view is is very similar yet different to ours. And he's a very quick thinker with it. So we we ended up talking about uh, breaking and entering. We were talking about stupid things to be part of the news, criminals and whatnot. I think that's what it came down to. Oh, okay. Makes sense. And, and you know, for whatever reason, we equated it to Goldilocks and the Three Bears and how that was a, this nursery rhyme for kids – uh, that we, we would hear all the time when we were little, but you, when you break it down, it's, a, it's, it's, it's about breaking and entering and, and stealing. We were talking about Goldilocks and Three yeah. Bears. Yeah. Interesting. It was, it was crazy because it's like everybody – when we were little, we were taught, oh, she was going in because she was looking for shelter. She was finding the right fit. But no, what it really has to do is that she was breaking and entering. That bitch jumped into their house. Yeah, she was a thief. She was a uh, – what do you call it? A, a, what's the official – I'm not a cop. Yeah. But whatever, she broke in and she entered and she ruffled through all their stuff. I mean, she broke their stuff and they ended up finding her asleep on their bed. Which, That's a criminal act. Yeah. On a side note, uh, Stephanie Reynolds last week, one of our friends on the show, <laughs> had a very similar act on Tuesday. She said she came home, but she posted it on Facebook so I can talk about it. Came home, her cats were outside, someone had broken into her house and literally rifled through her stuff. And Whoa. She fa- she, Stephanie found this woman passed out. On a pile of her bras on Stephanie's bed. Oh, that's what you're telling me, the crackhead. What? Yeah, that's the right. That's what the, Yeah, that's what started this conversation. Yeah. That's what yeah, exactly. That's what started the conversation. Yeah. Wow. Like, and I don't know why instantly Goldilocks came to my head. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. And, wait a minute. And if you think about it, it really it, it's very very much a similar thing. Stephanie had to get the cops involved, had to have <clears> her removed. But because it all came down to because she the, the crackhead was going through her stuff, trying on her stuff, like see what fit. It's like that's what Goldilocks did. Like, yeah. what the heck, man? She even went through the little bear, like the little kid. Went through his stuff, and it was like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. Isn't that just weird, though, that people think that's okay? Was that taught to us through Goldilocks and the Three Bears? We just didn't realize it? Well, now I'm wondering what the moral of Goldilocks and the Three Bears was, right? 
I yeah. mean, what, what was the moral? Because I remember it was too hot, too cold. One bed was too firm, too soft. This one's too just soft, right. and one's just right. Wasn't was there porridge then... involved? Yeah, one was too hot, one was too cold, one was just right. Now let me ask you this: Did the bears kill Goldilocks in that? I want to no. say they did. No, they didn't. No, you're thinking of red, right? No, wait, red, red here. No, red, no, man. I've, there was an I animal can't remember. That died. What was the ending? What was the ending of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? I want to say they ate her. <clears throat> Like in the original version, I want to say she got that bitch got eight, maybe. Because I, I, now that I'm trying to remember it, it, it seems like that story didn't really have a point. No, it is doesn't. that the fifth? Is that the Fifth Amendment right? Uh, the, the right to bear arms? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, second, yeah, second Amendment. Bear, that's, that's second there's amendment. a bear involved. Uh, yeah, I, it's a Second Amendment. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a topic on this one. So yeah. Scott, you lost the bet. So hey, you know that's the way it is. We had a whole show on, on Jason's favorite uh, amendments to the Bill of Rights. But when you think um, when you think about it, yeah, there are no, there is no real moral to that story that you can think of because it, it doesn't end happy. I mean, the bears clearly aren't happy that someone broke into their house, broke their stuff, and then ate their food. I'm about to drop a bomb on you guys, Tom and Jerry. Tom yeah. and Jerry, how oh. much crap did you see in those? cartoons where you're like hey that's funny when you were a little kid but now you see that you're older what why is he taking a bat to his head yeah why is that frying pan being used like that absolutely exactly why is he blowing the crap out of him through his butt i mean it's it's true and then looney tunes are the same way when you break it down yeah how, how many times did bugs shoot daffy in the face with a shotgun and, and, and like spin his beak around his head and why we did, laughed and we laughed we why did freaking geppetto want a little boy why that is how true is too. This not weird Okay, that is weird when you said that you break it down like that. And I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. But he you made know? the little boy. That was the thing. He made the little boy. Exactly. He did. But why does the nose have to grow when he lies? I think I it's, Well, no, because I think that the important part about that is to teach kids that if you lie and someone makes you, Your nose there are grow? consequences. So the nose well, growing is co- Yeah, right? So what if it's on his own <laughs> lie detector test? What if he believes his own lies? So is he really lying then? Ooh, yeah, good point. Good Ooh. point. I mean, he like steps on attack, and then his nose doesn't grow. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's it's this is like future CIA operative training that Geppetto <laughs> was working on. I mean, there's there's a whole another sequel to this. But he's so, a wooden boy, and he also turns into like part mule or donkey, doesn't he? I think so. Like when he goes to Pleasure Island. Whoa! 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait, is that a thing? Yeah, that was the name of that was the name of the island he went to. Which version are you talking about? The Disney version. <laughs> oh, you know, I, listen, I, I, pal. I said the Pleasure Island, not Pleasure Palace. All right, there's a totally different wait, di- different vibe. What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking Can about. Can you guys think of any <laughs> fairy tale that actually means something in today's world? Um, no. Did you purposely say that for a moment? Of I'm asking, like, because now I'm like, what, what was the point of Goldilocks so and the Three Bears? What's the point of the little, you know, the old oh, hon- little boy? Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Okay, really, that was that was actually a 14 part series because I read about that over Christmas, and that had a whole lot more horror to it than we were led to believe. Yeah, that was pretty. Freaky. That was a pretty fucked up uh, series of books when you sit down and, and break it down what the, what the Wizard of Oz really was. Frank Baum really wasn't. Uh, Writing a happy, happy story. The movie that it, movie company just made it a happy story. Maybe that should be a question. If anybody can find an actual story from back then, not not now, but back then, like what story from back then actually from our childhood actually means something for real? You know, it's a, that's it. Yeah, you look at the, the the Grimm brothers, the brothers Grimm, whatever they're called. They wrote all these fairy tales and, and, and fables and whatever else. And everyone, I, I was growing up to believe that all these stories had a, had a meaning. And now that we sit, we're just talking through it, I can't think of the meaning. Maybe Pinoc- you know, Pinocchio okay, is I, I, I have a meaning. I have a meaning. Uh, the, the, the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Never yeah, but you're just, encouraging, you're just encouraging obesity. No, no, no. I'm, I'm encouraging just keep plugging along. You can't those, call the, the you tortoise can't call the, lazy. He wasn't lazy. He was slow. He was, you can't call he him. Was he was busy. slow, not he was lazy. Fat. He, was, he lazy. was slow, not lazy. Yeah, he. The hare was the cocky one who said, "Oh man, I can do anything. I'm better than everybody else. You know, I'm the best at everything." And blah blah blah. And the hare out, reminds no. me of a yuppie. Of a yuppie. Do you guys remember? Do you guys know what a yuppie is? You guys yes, are older yeah. than me. You should know. Oh yeah. Yes. I know yeah. Yeah. Is. I know the yuppie is. Yeah. That's a typical yuppie. And the tortoise is actually like that's like the working man. That's true, man. That might be it. The, 
the up the 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 hair is the the man that gets everything handed to him. Everything he living the life very life. fast, living living the fast life, and the tortoise is the one that's working hard and and, and studying and saving, and he's going to win in the end. Yeah. It's, so the tortoise is the Rolling Stones, and the hair is Amy Winehouse or the Beatles. It's same thing, you know. It's no the. the uh, now, uh, now you're just bringing up yeah, crap. You just, just, yeah, you just kind of ruined that. I, I like the original. No, no, Tortoise in the hair. Work. Working man, yuppie. I like that one, too. I, I can, I can only, agree with that. Only because the other day I saw Men at Work. Like the Charlie Sheen movie? Yes, and Emilio Estevez. Yeah, that's a great movie, by the that's way. That's the only reason why I brought that up. Uh, that's a, <laughs> that, that is a strange way to bring up an Emilio Estevez and Charlie <laughs> Sheen movie, but I do... I respect the game on that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to plug that in. <laughs> I was like, I'm speechless, man. Like, I'll give him, I'll give him credit for that right there. Like, <laughs> well, okay. So the boy who cried wolf was a good one because it, it's definitely something I've learned in life that the more times you lie, hey, people I are just, not going to believe you. I just did my DNA and I am 42% Native American, and I find that offensive now. The, You're the, 42% Native American. The yes. boy who cried wolf. Yes. Why? Because like why you gotta be making fun, fun of wolves like that? Like that's like our that's like our culture now, man. The Mexican wolf, come on, bro. Oh, oh so so the uh, the wolf and the three little pigs is is bad one too. But is that bad because he's doing bad things, or is that one bad because at the end he gets it? Uh, I like bacon. You know, no, isn't it, that funny though? They that wolf is like a a very common theme. In well, fairy that tales. is true. Like, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but back then the, the wolf was a dangerous animal back in the day, and that's what they that's what they equated to danger. The wolf was, an but it was it danger. was a it was a dangerous animal according to who? Because if you ask hunters, like back in the day, they're like, no, I just leave them alone. Well, yeah, but we're talking about guys from Germany who had the the, the, the black forest and these other deep dark forests that you didn't know what was around the next corner, and there were packs of wolves and other dangerous animals. So they might not be afraid of, of wolves during the day, but at night when they're by themselves hunting. You know, yeah, but all the wolves did stuff during the day. Were they? I thought they're nocturnal animals. Well, like the three little pigs, the wolf blew everything down during the day. Well, and all the wolf was trying to do is get bite to eat. Why do we love yeah, the pigs so much? I exactly. Mean, he's just trying to we get some food. We kill pigs today. We kill them for, for, for literally for food. Oh, I, I, I get it, and I'm not disagreeing with and that. And, dude, fact. I'm a man of bacon all day long, man. All day. You cook me some bacon, and I'm good. That's it. So maybe like, the wolf like, is... Yeah, you're justifying the wolf's actions because bacon? Yes. I'm just saying that the wolf is just trying to get some bacon, right? So how is, how is the, three little, the three little pigs different from Goldilocks and the three bears? Ooh, because bacon represents... It's, like a, it's another meaning for money, so they're like, don't be greedy. See, because the wolf, the wolf flew down <laughs> the three houses, the two houses. So... I like I just lost here because no, I I am completely at a loss for what's even going on right now. No, I think the moral of that story was just always um, be safe and build a brick house. Yeah. Or be careful take, which take your, pig you go after because they might come after you. Take your time and do it right, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe it's like any story. People take it for people take what they want out of a moral, and those morals can be interpreted in multiple different ways. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, you know, it, it's always fun to sit and think about it because when you look back at these at these stories and in some cases cartoons as adults, uh, you don't realize uh, maybe how adultish they were back in the day. We just didn't pick up on it, you know, like blackface and Looney Tunes. Yeah, exactly. That Mary was per- Melodies. very ac- very acceptable back in the day. Now you can't do that. Yeah, well, I mean, it was offensive. <laughs> it was, but you know, but th- those are the days during segregation where they viewed things differently. I'm not well, if you think about yeah, it, like, I mean, that's a good point. It was a little just... offensive. Well, that's the thing. They couldn't just make a black cartoon. They had to literally make a white cartoon in blackface. That yeah. was jacked up. Well, like, they literally drew that out. Wow. This got real deep real quick. I, that mind mind, didn't right yeah, I didn't even see that one coming. Boom. Well, I think also it seems like a lot of these Grimm's Tales, like you said, Scott, are there to scare kids. Like, scare them. But scare them into what? Behaving, I think. Uh, scare them into behaving. Listen to your parents. Your parents won't steer you wrong. Right, so on the, on the Goldilocks and the Three Bears, who are you supposed to be? The kid that breaks into someone else's house and gets messed up? Who, 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 who are you supposed to be in that moral? Hey, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say it was a perfect system. And, <laughs> Wasn't and I, this the era of LSD? Goldilocks no. and the Three Bears? No. The Goldilocks and the Three Bears is like 1500s. Yeah. Whoa. 
Grimm's, uh, the Grimm's fairy tales well, have been around for hundreds of years. Well, maybe we should check and make sure that was actually one of the Grimm's fairy tales before we start making assumptions, too. That might That's be the true. case. Where... That's all you guys. I never said Grimm's, except for now. Except, well, <laughs> fair. That's fair. But a lot, of the, a lot of those old fairy tales and fables come from the Grimm's brothers. <laughs> well, like and... Cinderella and all those stories come from a from yeah. long, long time ago. Exactly. Th- those just... aren't new stories that it came out. Exactly. So, you know, just things to think about. This is kind of a fun conversation to talk about with your friends. And this is what we talk about in the barbershop at random. So, you know, it was just a fun thing we thought we could come on the show and talk about tonight. It wow. is true. So All many right. stories. But it, it doesn't just have to do with Disney, like anything that you were told when you were young. Yeah. Yeah, the Disney movies so are... start questioning everything your parents just told you. Every I'm, about to drop a, I'm about to drop a bomb on you guys. Bird Box. That, show, yeah. that movie is about El Cucuy. Do you guys I know no, what Kukui is? No, I haven't seen Bird Box yet, so. Oh, you haven't, oh. Scott? I, dude, oh, dude, dude, I just finally watched Split. Wow. Moral of the story, dude. Don't don't mess with the big D, man. Don't mess with it. Huh? That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> don't mess with the big D. The, the, Alabama, the Alabama Black Snake? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. It'll oh, get you. It'll man. get you. Well, Josh, hey. We appreciate you coming on the show, but before we go, uh, tell us your favorite fairy tale that you grew up with. And did it have a meaning? Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Um, so th- this weekend is the NFL uh, AFC NFC Championship game. So uh, let me hear some predictions before we go off the air. Josh, who do you got this weekend? Uh, I am a Cardinals fan. Just to, 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 to reiterate that or iterate that, whatever. So I have to say that first. I'm not a fan of the teams I'm about to pick. But I am going for the Rams and the Chiefs. I believe they will come out. I hope they come, would, would come out over. Those are two solid picks. Jason? Um, I'm going Rams, obviously. Uh, but I'm going the Patriots. I oh! think that they will find a way Rematch. to beat. Bro. Uh, they will find a way to beat them. And then uh, – but I, I do think the Rams are going to shock the world and beat New Orleans so, at New Orleans. I'm, yes. I'm going to go with the Saints because I picked them in the preseason. I'm going I'm to ride that to the end. And I'm going to go to Kansas City. I read a news report uh, this evening that it's looking at 10 degrees in Arctic temps and, and uh, conditions uh, at game time on Sunday. So not even New England's prepared for a Midwestern winter like that. So I'm, I'm going to go Chiefs. I'm going to go Saints. And I'm going to go down. Drew Brees uh, over Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl, give them – uh, their second Super Bowl and let Drew Brees right off into the sunset retiring. You guys are both wrong. It's the Rams and the Chiefs. Wow. I was going to say, Scott, what, Last what, we got a wager on that. I, do, I smell, I, I, do I smell a wager? You want, you want to put a wager on who goes to the I, Super Bowl? Or? I'm smelling. Uh, it's going to be the Rams and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I okay, will put this? money on that. I, I, I already can tell that you have the Saints. I have the Rams. So I think that that's a very easy bet to make. Uh, okay. Now on the. Um, Liquid on the uh, sh- on the podcast, yeah. Okay, so uh, loser um, must do the winner's drunk history again. Do you, would no, you like loser do gets to reverse. <laughs> Game moment. on, dude. But, Game on. But but it has to be done in the Beale Street Barbershop after hours downtown with Josh Mendoza uh, as a part of the program. All right, all right. So do Josh, you- will you host our next drunk history podcast? You know what? I will. I'd appreciate that Thanks, because Thank we, you, we, will, we will come downtown and we will, we will get drunk in the back of a barbershop and one of us will regale the tales of a drunk history why, event. Why has it got to be in the back? Well, you can be in the front. I don't care. Yeah, you, know, you own the business, man. We can get drunk wherever you want us to get drunk. We will get drunk to be continued. All right. To That's be fair. continued. Very good. Like That is like fair. It. That is fair. Uh, Josh, thank you for being on the show. It's always entertaining, man. And <clears throat> you just helped make this sweep this, this game on Sunday afternoon way more entertaining for us to see uh, who will be coming down and getting drunk in your barber shop and telling the story. <laughs> for real. <laughs> I love uh, it, guys. I love it. Uh, all right, Jason, take us home. Josh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for all the listeners out there. Really appreciate you. Scott, I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>